sponsor's 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It is a Monday night. It is nine o'clock and it is time to uh, tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable mod master that is Mark. Um, this week, obviously, with the, the trilogue thing that's going on, um, that we're going to keep an eye. Uh, going to be keeping an eye on, on the other screen. Um, if any of the, the other guys you know, need to scream, they, they can scream and... Uh, and Depending on how things go, as Dave said, he may pop back after this show if there's some movement. Um, if there's something that, that's desperate, um, we may well sort of uh, chop and change, pop in and out. Don't know how it's going to work. Um, obviously, it's all happening live, so we need to uh, we need to play it by ear as it happens. Um, if you're joining us for the first time um, tonight, firstly, welcome. Um, basically, we mod stuff, um, e siggy stuff, uh, or we do a bit of vapping or whatever they were saying in, in, in the chat. I, I totally missed it. Um, this week, I must say... Um, before before we start, um, me and Mark, uh, normally the way that we do these shows, um, I have no idea what Mark is actually going to be doing, um, vice versa. It's not until I get his videos through um, and start sort of piecing a show together that, that we sort of realise you know, what he's actually done that week. Um, this week, you can, you can obviously, I was ever so slightly shocked um, that we've done pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, different methods... But we do have uh, one of our viewers to, to thank for this, which is uh, Lamental. He did send myself and Mark a, uh, a Nintendo controller. So this week we both sort of started down the path of, of modding the Nintendo controller. Both from different angles, both with different builds. Um, but when I watched it back, some of the stuff and some of the processes we took were too close. Um, it, was, it was bonkers. Anyway... Enough waffle, let's crack into our, to our first little video. I'll pop back after these. Like I say, if anything happens with the trial in between, um, we'll, we'll try and update you best we can. See you back in two. Well, this week, as you'll see, Lamental very kindly sent, also sent me one of these NES controllers. So I thought I'll have a play with this. And it won't be a DNA 20 mod as I don't have a DNA 20 to hand to put in it for a start and um, other people have already done these and possibly maybe doing them again so I thought I'll do something a bit different so I've taken the screws out of this and basically you've just got a single board in here that's all that's in there with the touch connectors so that will be for the bin, I think. And what you're left with is rather a small space, to be honest. There ain't a massive amount of room in this to work with. So I've had a think, and probably what I'll be using to power it will be this 20C 1300mAh lithium polymer battery. So. With a bit of work, uh, this battery will fit up in here. I'll have to remove a couple of the, well, at least one of the screw holes and the corresponding piece on the other side, which will be here. And that, these need to come out. So there's going to be a lot of grinding to go on. But what's going to be controlling all of this will be this and you might not recognize what it is I wouldn't be surprised at all but this is or was an ego an ego twist battery and it's a 650 milliamp battery despite what it says on there and this bit was at the bottom to control the voltage on it but what had happened with this one in particular is at some point it's been knocked or dropped and the control had been forced into this and so it jammed completely and it's twisted this around when you instead of twisting the actual voltage and snapped off the wires so that's just a simple case of soldering that back on and this will be working again but rather than have it like this I thought I'll double up the power from it and have a nice control thing so, let's see how we get on with this. First job's going to be to 
get rid of a load of this plastic, I think. So, Dremel as usual. I will turn this volume down. Now I could have just cut a lot of this away with a standing knife more than likely, but it's a lot less effort and probably end up cleaner using the Dremel. So now I've got a bit more open space to work with. You just see the battery is easy going to fit inside here. not going to fit this side. No way, I need to remove that at the very least. Basically, I can force that battery in there. I've sort of got something that's going to fit. But I still need to cut this down slightly. That's just a bit too much there. Right, so we're back in the room once again and last week we sort of put out to you guys what you may want to uh, to see. Um, it was quite unanimous that, that this um, would be used, which is the NES controller. And I've been taking a, a little look at this this morning. Um, I've obviously opened the thing up and uh, we're just roughly having a look at how this is going to work. Um, never seen the insides of, of one of these, never seen um, uh, if you like a demo of a mod done, although I've seen uh, the mods that are out there, so realistically all I can give is, is my interpretation of, of um, how I'm going to do this, um, rather than going by someone else's instructions. Now, my first thoughts when I opened this up were to potentially try and utilise um, the existing buttons, but that's not really going to happen. Um, I'm gonna be using the board, um, and as I say, you know, there's always somebody who's, who's gonna know uh, how people do it and, and the best way to do it, and I'm probably gonna be doing it wrong. 
um, but I'm just going to go with what I've got. I'm probably going to make much more work of it because, as I say, first time I've seen one of these um, inside and, and what will fit and what won't fit and what will work and what won't work. Um, essentially, the way that this normally happens is it has a 5 volt supply um, to it and uh, all the buttons are wired through this chip here um, and obviously they're on, if you like, a, uh, a little sensor pad that goes across here and da 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 and it's it. And yes, you, you, would, you could probably say, oh, you could reuse these. Um, what I'm going to try and do um, is cut this board down to, to a size and I'm looking at potentially um, keeping, if you like, the bottom section cutting that round so I've got me insert up there to hold it uh, screw holes are going to hold it in place um, down the bottom etc um, etc et so there are certain portions I've got to keep on this board to make sure it stays nice and secure what I'm sort of thinking is obviously keeping these existing switches in place um, but using them in a different way and, and the way that I've been looking at doing that is, is potentially getting um, some of these little uh, doo -doo -doo clicky switches um, and when the board is, is cut down, um, mounting those, uh, poking through uh, with just enough depth so that when you press the button, it activates the switch. So it means cutting this board down, cutting some holes in, uh, cutting the squares in. So effectively what I'm going to be doing is, is only cutting in um, an up and a down on here. Um, and probably only going to be using uh, one of these buttons to fire. Um, just to make it nice and simple. As I say, it's the first mod. I know on some of the DNAs, both of these are, are wired to, to work, so either or is the fire button. Um, but I'm just going to use the one button, uh, which is we are going to be using the gubbins of the groove. It's a fingerprint magnet. It's bloody horrible. Uh, and essentially all that's got on it is one button and up and a down. And we're going to be trying to reinstall this screen um, into here. Um, it's going to be damn tight. It really is going to be tight. I'm going to have to echo out this. I've been looking at potentially can I get this battery in um, and with some jiggery and pokery this little 1300 uh, mile battery in there should go. Um, trying to get the board or, or the display in here and work around the rest of it. Like I say, first time I've seen one I haven't got a clue what I'm looking at or, or what I'm doing this is the sort of plan. Um, today I hope to get um, this board uh, cut to size um, so it will fit in there. I'm going to hack some of the box out um, to try and get this. I'm going to try and get some of this or at least a switch mounted in um, to test. Um, and I'm assuming that once this is mounted in um, I can adjust the depth on that switch uh, and that's where I'll fix it. So it's at the right depth through on that board to just sit nicely and flush behind there so when you press your button you click your switch right way wrong way don't know winging it what I'm going to do I'll pop away um, or you probably won't see me pop away I'll probably edit these two together I'm just going to open up the groove and, uh, and have a look and see what we got in there I've relieved the uh, board from the uh, from the groove, um, cut all the gubbins out and bits and pieces, keep that big battery to one side. Um, it sort of highlighted a, a few potential problems. A, the, the way that the switch is sandwiched down in there, there is very little, um, the soldering is going to be so fine on this board. The other problem I've, I've got uh, looking at it is actually getting it to to fit, work and, and sort of look relatively okay. Um, the screen on this board, I'm going to remove this middle lug here um, and, and that will go. Um, hopefully I want to try and get the screen central. problem I've got with, with getting this screen um, centralised in there is that the USB charging is obviously attached to the board. So whereas I can get that pretty much central so it's going to pop out the top once I've relieved this lug in here um, obviously the USB charging which would be on the side here isn't going to work. I should be able to work enough room to get the battery in there that I want to get in and to give me a little more room for the battery what I've sort of looked at doing is, is actually removing that seat in the switch directly behind there 
um, but trimming up the the rubber insert so it gives it that sort of uh, shock absorbery bit. I want to keep the rollers on here, so I'm still going with the plan probably of, of, of drilling out um, the board or taking a portion off this board um, there and mounting um, the other two switches through for the up and down on the wattage um, and then sort of securing that back in. What I'm looking to do then potentially to handle the USB charging um, is that once this board is sandwiched back down in there, um, potentially I'm looking at, at getting a um, mounting my USB charging board on the top end of here, poking through that side and going straight onto the battery. I should be able to then drill a, a couple of little micro holes in the back of the casing um, to see charge state and this, that and the other. Um, so it will take the USB charging away from, from the actual board here, I may be able to you know, there probably would be a way of linking it through, but for speed and this and the other, I think I'm just going to put an external board in. Um, it will charge your battery, and you'll see the uh, should still see that on the display um, that it's being charged. I don't know. So that's where we are. Um, yeah, bag full of bits at the moment. Like I say, there's 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 probably a completely better way of doing this. Um, this is my my first game, my first impression, and and worth a play. Um, I'll pop away, I'll come back in two and we'll uh, we'll start hopefully dremeling up this board I want to take out, uh, or the bits I want to keep. And there we go, we are back in the room once again. So yeah, as, as you see, we, we sort of work completely separately. Um, both decided to do exactly the same mod um, this week. Um, and like I say, we have uh, Lamental to thank for that. Um, obviously different approaches. Uh, somebody did pop a, a little message in chat there saying, you know, where can you get the batteries from? The particular one that, that I'm using, um, I've relieved from uh, an old PCC case. Um, I know the battery's good in there. Um, so it's, it should perform okay. And Marks, I believe, he, he typed up. He was he was using something from a from an RC helicopter. Um, what I'm going to do? Pop into our first little ad break. Um, I'll see you back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors Ten Year Tip with Gary Dibley. in Yorkshire for your ECPs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk. iVeber and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go. We're back in the room once again. Um, as of yet, still nothing from the from the trilog. Um, it's almost as though somebody shut them in the room and stuck a bloody great GG through the doors, you know, through the handles of the door, so so they can't get back out. And and maybe that's what we should have done until they actually come out with a with a reasonable answer. Um, we're going to crack on with our, our mod making. Um, as I say we're we're both doing the same thing. Different approaches. Um, it's just started absolutely pelting it down um, outside here, so uh, I'm trying to keep the noise to a minimum. Let's crack on with Mark's next little bit. I'll see you back shortly. So with that piece removed, the battery now will sit in here nicely. No 
not sure how it's going to affect putting these back in place. I may have to cut this down a bit. But I'm not sure, I may just trim this off and just glue them into place. As I won't be needing especially the usage of the buttons. I'm not entirely certain what I'll be using as a switch at this point. I'm thinking of replacing it with one of these micro switches which will probably help if the button was in place, wouldn't it? Fine here. There we go. So with this button cover in place, hopefully I'll be able to glue that switch there. And I'm not sure if you can hear it, but that's firing the button nicely. Be sat there. And to fit that in, I'll need to remove this section from the other side. But I need to be certain exactly what I'm going to do before I do that. Now, as for the control, I'm going to use what was the cable hole on this. So this control on its board, I think, will sit right inside of there. So if I square off the edges of this hole, this whole thing should fit inside there. Give me an external control to use the voltage. And that's next on my list. I'm going to have to be very careful with this though. Finish it off with a knife because there isn't a massive amount of room to work with here. In particular, I want to keep this support intact so it'll hold the board in place. There you look. There we go. And that will sit in there. With the top section done the same way, it should work nicely.
bit of cleaning up. There you look. I need to take a little bit more off the top to get it to go, but pretty much there. So as you'll see with a bit of work, the control sits in there nicely, flush with the top. It should be easy just to control over the thumbnail or small screwdriver. Next, I'm going to have to work out exactly where I want the switches to eh, switches switch to go. I'm planning on one of the buttons, I think, but I need to work out. After I put the battery in, where's the atomizer going to go? Atomizer connector going to go, I should say. If I move the battery all the way down to this end, I think I've got enough space up here. So, the atomizer, fire button on, probably the B button, I think. And the rest of the buttons will just be not used. Because I'm using what's essentially EGO Electronics, it means it will have built-in charging. So it will just charge through a regular EGO charger. So if I put the button under this one, I can find the button. it won't fire the switch without the cover on it so I will right so we're back in the room and I've attached uh, my little extension tool to my Dremel which basically just is a, a corded thing that attaches to the face of the Dremel and allows a bit more um, control with the hand um, when you're using this if you don't want to be using a massive thing this is more of a a pen tip controller type thing. I've got a um, blade in there that's, that's sort of been worn to buggery um, during the process. So what I'm going to start doing right now is, is taking off a, uh, a few of the um, the lugs as you know some of the ones I think I won't need. Um, it's going to be difficult doing this on camera but I'll just power that up. You might want to stick your fingers in your ears. If we can find the on button for the Dremel.
tell you what I'll do. I'm going to go away and carry on hanging out this box. Um, come back in two. Right, so I've mullered the case. Not mullered, but uh, drilled out a bit. And there were some lugs in the top of the uh, the back case I've taken out as well. Um, because I was sort of looking at the way that this is going to sort of go together. And was hoping that obviously there's a certain depth in the top here as well. So if the battery could sit and be secured up in this half, which is nanos then of interruption down into this bit. The only reason I'm saying that is because I, I think I'm just going to have to suck it and see, drill some holes and, and go from there. It, it is getting um, a lot tighter than, than I thought it would be in it, um, and it's probably because of the battery and the army going overhead. Um, but essentially, uh, with my sort of battery pack where I was sort of hoping it was going to go, um, roughly here, and as I say, if I allow for a bit of elevation on there up into the cavity, um, it gives me much more room to play with with the switches. So I may well install that in this half, um, because then that doesn't leave me much space to play with to get the screen in because the screen is offset on here um, and if I want to get that screen central in here um, my board is going to be over there somewhere there is another way of doing this that I looked at which would be to essentially mount the board over this end but that means I'll be cutting into the, the signage which I didn't really want to do um, maybe I'll get it above it, it depends on space I might be able to cut into it and get it half and half, but that wouldn't be nice either. So like I say, this is this is still playing. I mean, the other thing I was looking at is there are some cutouts on the side of this board here that I could ream out a little bit more to go around the fixing screw there. Um, get my battery then in there. My switches would be fine down in there on the top with... So, as I said, one of those. This is obviously staying intact over here. And I've got a cut portion of the board on to secure the uh, the rocker switch. So, obviously, the one thing I haven't spoken about yet is my Atti. Now, if I'm going to do it this way around, my Atti is going to be going pretty much dead centrally there. So, I'm going to have to, I'm definitely going to have to cut a noggin out of that board. Um, but that's sort of where, I, where I'm thinking of going with it, somewhere sort of like that-ish, hopefully. Or, like I say, if, if that battery will mount up in the other half of the casing, the only way I'm going to do that is, is to, to get some, some dry fitting done. Um, and what I need to do for that is going to be uh, work out what portion of this board I'm keeping to go down on here and I'll just get that cut off at the moment and I might try and get some holes routed in um, for the switches but that is sort of where I'm thinking of going with it it's, it's going to be quite a tight fit um, because obviously I'm, I'm keeping these two buttons as well um, they're not going to function they, they will be fixed but obviously they're, they're going to be in place um, otherwise it just wouldn't look right when, you, uh, when you're when you looking at the other side so up in the air, I don't know, we've started looking at it, wishing he, he didn't, um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's getting there. The reason I've got to keep this board on, as I say, is because I want the rocker to work. Um, the rocker is on little, a little bearing in the centre there, um, which allows the movement, um, and that has got to obviously be up against the, the board. Um, and I want to keep that for the up and down on, on, the, uh, on the wattage control. Um, a lot of work in this one, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Uh, I'm going to get that board cut measured and, um, and I'll pop back in two. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. So as you can see, two completely different sort of approaches, um, almost, almost uh, the same. <laughs> Bonkers. Uh, yeah bizarre but uh, it goes to show I think Mark said to me uh, great minds um, I just think pure fluke on both our parts um, let me pop into our second little ad break I'll come back very shortly after this
Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. Um, apparently there is still no news from the, the trilogue. They, they've effectively still locked in. Um, there is a theory that they have uh, slipped out the fire escape and headed to the nearest pub um, where they could be found probably with a fag. Um, that that is is one of the theories. Um, I, I'm sure it's it's good news. It's only good news that they're in there. They're probably battering the hell out of each other, which is a good thing, um, we hope. We do hope. Um, I hope they're not in there all night because I do have to be. It's my little daughter's birthday tomorrow. Uh, she's six tomorrow, believe it or not. Um, yes, and uh, yeah, she's going to have me up at about four in the morning, um, probably, um, which is about the time my wife leaves for work. So um, I'm, I'm going to be up nice and early, I do believe. Um, let me pop into our next little section and uh, pop back after this. What I'm probably going to do is glue, cut this section out and glue it in place and that'll hold it. And again for the switch I'm going to have to just trim down this a bit. So the battery doesn't get in the way. Plastic flying off across the room. So that still holds in enough, but it's out the way now. And with 
this plastic cut down. The switch will just glue in place over the top and fire nicely. So that's that sorted. Next is going to be to glue in the rest of the buttons, I think. So I won't need that piece. That will just super glue into place, I think. But the other buttons, which I appear to have lost, I think I'm going to have to cut them down as well and just glue them into the hole, as they won't be needed for function anymore. So after what is a remarkable amount of indecision, I finally come to a plan. I had to think, and. This is going to super glue in place, as is this. But before I do that, I need to remove this ridge along here. Sorry, this ridge along here. Otherwise, it gets in the way of the battery. So that should just be a matter of running a knife blade along here, like so. Now I'll leave the rest of the holding in place and that will sit flush. So they'll super glue in place. This button will also be super glued down. So for this, all I'm going to need is one section. And as I'm not going to be using this post to hold it in place, I'm going to get rid of it altogether so it gives me a bit more room for the battery. So It's quicker and easier. So, that's that gone. Decision made. So, one of these I need to remove that piece and check in with the battery again. That will now glue into the hole, I believe. Need a bit more trimming off this. Like so. I can just leave this all as one piece, I think. That'll give me a bit more to glue to. And then this switch. I'll sit directly on top and again I'll just be super gluing it in place bend the pins down once I've soldered the switch wires in place and that'll be it so I will need to drill a hole for a 510 connector on the end and it's just a matter of soldering it all up and gluing everything in place so very simply Very thin there is super glue across this surface. It doesn't matter if anything overlaps because it's going to be stuck in place basically. Hold it for a few seconds. It should be done. For this one. Again, it just needs a layer around the upper surface. And I think around the top of where the buttons would go in. 
that's pretty much our contact points. So. And just push it into place. Trying to make sure that you don't glue your fingers at the same time, of course. Which I very nearly did. Finally, you've got your other button. As soon as you're finished, why is it leaks everywhere? And I'm back in the room now. I'm just I've cut this section off, and I'm literally just hollowing out a, uh, a little hole. If you wonder why I'm sounding muffled, there's a very good reason. I've got a dust mask on. The amount of dust this cutting this board has kicked up. I've valued my lungs. It just went everywhere. It will all become clear in a minute why I'm filing away at this bit of. Well, I hope it becomes clear because it hasn't become clear to me yet. Nearly there, a net, a net's left. Yeah, you don't really want to be breathing this stuff if you can help it. I think for demo purposes, that's good enough. So, I'll remove the mask. Dust mask. Essential if you're doing stuff like that. Basically, what I've done is I've taken the um, the section here off um, of the circuit board that was in there. And the reason for that, as I was saying earlier, what I want to try and do is put um, a couple of the switches uh, in bed those behind the uh, the D pad. Um, so the thought process is, and it may be totally bonkers, and there's, like I say, somebody's bound to say there's a far easy way of doing that, deeply. but I wanted to try and get an authentic feel to the to the D-pad, um, and when that is in situ now, I should be able to drop this back over the lugs, no, wrong way around, the lugs that it came out of, and uh, this one here will, will screw down when the final case goes on. But what I'll be doing is is making sure this is all uh, sort of either epoxied or, or set firm in place. But what it will give me the ability to do now is mount up um, my two switches directly behind that board there. I'll show you with one, the starters. So once that's actually embedded in that board and everything's pressured down, I'll be able to adjust the, the height on that switch so that when I... You can hear. I'm getting in contact. So same with the up and down. So these two switches then will be rigged in to work with the up and down on the uh, on the controller. I hope that makes sense. I hope it does because it doesn't to me. Um, but essentially, what that allows me to do is keep the uh, the rocker on the controller. Um, with these, as I say, with these buttons down in here, I should just be able to literally dump straight on the top of those. I'm going to cut down the uh, the rubber insert that was originally there, embed that in the middle so it keeps that, if you like, spongy feel of, of the uh, of the controller buttons. Um, but then, so yeah, sort of just cut out this metal bit 
metal, plastic, rubber, whatever it is. Get that in there, and then that will cushion up against these um, these two switches. I've decided to do the two that are going to mount down in there. So I'll have my wattage up and down, and I'll have a choice of either or uh, for the fire button. I'm going to get the original rubber switches back down here for the select and this and the other. Um, I could have just left the D-pad in, in situ, but uh, yeah, it would be rude not to use it, I say. So we're sort of still thinking, um, hopefully, get the board around here somewhere. Or, well, we were thinking up there, weren't we? Um, and with that, that means the battery can sit down in here, like so. Board over here, potentially. Or, if my battery will go up in the air, um, we should have a much better sort of uh, layout. And then, where's my rubbers? I've lost my little rubber buttons. And they'll just be seated back down in there. Obviously, there'll be no pad behind them. And what I'm going to do is probably give those a coat of uh, epoxy so they don't push all the way through. Something like that. With our at end in the middle up here. And like I say, what I need to do is investigate whether I can actually uh, use the um, upper end of the casing to take up some of the slack. So at the moment, that's sort of quite tight because the board's up in the air, this and the other. And I've got a switch that's stuck in, which is the original fire switch for the board. But that is sort of, at this moment in time, not going to close. So there's there's a lot, a lot of jiggery pokery still to do in that box, uh, working out where we're going to go, where stuff's going to go, where it's all going to do. My next stage um, is probably going to be to try and set these switches to a height um, that they'll function. So I need to get those in, get them uh, glued or epoxied or, or whatever in place on that board there. And again, make sure that that isn't going to interrupt my um, height on the on the box um, with the switches in place. It shouldn't do, because what there was was a couple of lugs this side here that were pressuring down on, on the back of this to hold it in place. Um, so we will need to, once this is in situ, I'll, I'll have to build up some sort of a, an epoxy seating. Um, it should sit back down on, on its original lugs, like I say back down in there like that on its original lugs um, and all I need to do is get those firmed up a bit but it's then switch, set in the switch height once that's in for the up and down don't know if this is the way that others do it um, this is the way that we're bodging it uh, like I say it may be wrong it may be right I just don't know um, I might pop away get some of those switches epoxied in um, depending on time we may uh, we may be carrying this over to next week um, if I do get time I, when I work out where this is going to go I'm not going to cut anything um, the one thing I, I probably can do is is get the etty hole drilled out so I can get that uh, roughly placed up so at least I, I know then what I've got to work with within the box. I'll pop away, I'll come back in two. And there we go, we are back in the room once again. Um, I've just had a little beep in my ear and, uh, and I, I think the guys are sort of ready or they will be ready to return um, after this show so I'm not going to sit here and waffle for too long. Um, I'll, I'll finish a little bit early to, uh, to allow them to get their stream back up and this and the other. Um, but we're nearly there anyway. The one thing that, that, that I've, I've got a sneak preview, um, I, I carried on obviously uh, a little bit and, and filmed for uh, next week. And next week we're not we're not sort of 100% sure what's, what's going to happen. We may well be back or there may be uh, something a bit teamy because it's very very close to, to Christmas. Um, obviously uh, next week 23rd um, so depending on what happens obviously the schedules will be announced um, there may be something of a team type thing going on uh, and we'll be back then probably on the 6th which is which is in getting close to uh, to two years I think um, for, for me and Mark on ten, or two years for me on, on tenure tip um, yeah so I, I had a, a play carried on a little bit and I've sort of decided that that is where me screen's going in there is there one 
So I've got my little uh, little smoked insert in there for the screen um, and um, everything sort of fitting and coming together. So we'll either be continuing uh, with these um, next week or it'll be uh, into the new year, um, 6th of January, I do believe. So with all that said, I'm going to wrap up so the guys can, can get the stream back. Um, I'll pick up uh, in chat as well. I've, I've obviously you know, been doing this, so not been paying much attention. But the uh, as far as I'm aware, the tweets are starting to come through. And you guys are probably talking about it already. Uh, I need to go and have a look. Um, if it's the first time uh, you, you've joined us tonight, um, you like we see, we're here every week on a Monday, nine o'clock. Obviously, the guys are, you know, they're live through the week as well. Um, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, uh, you name it, um, and and uh, even on Sundays, believe it or not. I will see you in some way, shape, or form um, next week. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. It has been emotional as ever. Um, I need to go and catch up with the news. So I'm going to leave uh, and let the guys pick up with the stream. Um, Dave, I believe, and Sav coming straight up very shortly after this.